ladies and gentlemen, you're listening to This Is A Work. My name is David Hensley. I'm the owner and creative director of Long Walk Productions, and I am here to introduce your host, David Two Dogs Hayes. Uh, thank you very much, David Hensley, and welcome to Rock Hill, South Carolina's only premier wrestling review paper view podcast. This is a work. With me, as always, is my tag team partner, Chris, the fashion plate Barnes. How are you, brother? I'm out of breath just listening to you. <laughs> just had a Red Bull. I'm doing pretty good, man. Uh, and, man, I, I got to tell you, so we watched Payback. Oh, also, Red Bull, they sponsored this show. Yeah. <laughs> um, Not yet they don't. If you're listening, Red Bull, uh, between me and Doug's, we drink a lot of it. I'm no, I mean, don't, don't listen to this show because uh, they sponsored Payback and uh, we have things to say. <laughs> oh, you meant that show. Yeah. That's All a good right. point. Yeah. yeah. Maybe maybe we wait for the sponsor plug after. We yeah. <laughs> Red Bull, uh, maybe don't listen to this episode. Pick a different one. You know what? Listen though? to SummerSlam. It was <laughs> in, in all fairness, it, it wasn't the worst thing I've seen this year. No. It, it, the, I mean... The pterodactyls in Gastonia were the worst thing that I've seen this year. But that doesn't have anything to do with wrestling. It's, Especially if they go to the bathroom because, you know, the pee is silent. <laughs> <laughs> no, we've got payback and it's... um it it, it That happened. You know, it... It's a letdown, man. It really... It kind of... Yeah. It's uh, it's a step down from SummerSlam. Yeah, it's just that SummerSlam was so good, they followed it up um, like this. Admitting, admittingly, um, I had a little bit of fun with, uh, with yourself, Hensley, Katie, and my wife uh, Sunday night. Uh, I went on a little Roman Reigns tirade. Oh, God. Um, had I had some fun with that, um, <laughs> uh, and you know I had, I'm 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 in with Reigns. He, he did his typical. Everyone hates this guy, so it's time to jump on the bandwagon. Well, I don't really agree with. I've I've been a part of the Roman Empire yeah. for quite some time now. This this if if you've listened anywhere, <laughs> this this is what he does. Yeah, yeah, right on. Mm-hmm. Be- believe that. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I, but let's be honest. Um, yeah, I, I had some fun with that yeah. Sunday. Well, I mean, it was um, peaks and valleys with the show, honestly. This was, um, I'm finally, I, I'm really glad that um, Vince finally got my letters about Roman. It only took him five years. I've been screaming, turn this man heel. Yes, actually, yeah. It, you sh- Honestly, you you should have done this when he beat Taker. You should have turned him then. Oh sure, yeah. He should have. He should have come out and just been like, "I did it," and piss on you. Because he that. got so much heat for that. I mean, he was already teetering on not being liked. He was. Um, he was pretty much there. He, the yeah. train was almost in that station. And then he beat Taker. Uh, he, which, he shatters the streak, which and, no one but Taker wanted. <laughs> yeah, or he retired. The he retired st- Taker. Taker. That's yeah. what he did, and that's what that that's what. Pretty sure, it, like the the feeling on that was anybody but Roman. Yeah, and you, see, you know, I'll tell you what, this would have been tough for me as, as a heel, Mark. It would have been really tough for me to hate the very next Monday night if they cut the lights out and did the bell. And started playing Taker's music, and Roman comes out wearing his <laughs> Taker's gear because you wouldn't have known it would have been Taker if he keeps right. his head down right. until the lights come back up and he takes that and it's Roman. The o- the only way that works for me is at the end he does not carefully take it off. He just like just like just flips the hat off, just tosses off the jacket. Yeah, and then to believe that. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> if I remember correctly, that's what you were convinced was going to happen the I next want, night. Yes, I wanted that to happen because oh, the, that crowd was so pissed off. Oh, uh, oh absolutely. I mean, I, I mean, even though we knew it was going to happen, but you know what? 
That's enough of living so, in the past. Well, I, I did want to say I, another podcast I listened to suggested that the best thing to do would be turn it into a curse. And now that he's beaten, retired the Undertaker, he has to be the Undertaker. Yeah, I love that idea. <laughs> I, I would. Yeah, I would do that. Yeah. But let's move into payback and. um Ooh, let's let's get it started, man. So we're going to start out the pre-show here. Apollo Crews versus MVP. No, you're skipping something. I am. You what are am skipping sk- something. What am I skipping? You're skipping the the Riot Squad versus the Iconics. Holy shit! I am skipping. That, that. was the pre-show match. My God, you are so right. How which, did I miss which, that? Which it's important to note because this was part of the part part of the storyline is the Riot Squad got back together. Yeah, yeah. So the the Riot Squad they are back together, which means we've wasted this whole all these vignettes and all this time that we put into um, reinventing uh, uh, Liv Morgan, yeah. and now. Yeah, she's lost all her fashion sense again. <laughs> yeah, so she's back to being Harley Quinn. That's so cute. And but then Monday, uh, they have another match, and then the Iconics are trying to convince her that hey, hey, you. That's you. what they were doing at, at, the, at the match too. They came out and they were like, she, "She's gonna mess with you. She's gonna betray you." Mm-hmm. And so we've already started that rift before it even gets started, which brings me to a complaint. Why are we destroying the tag team division? They have nothing they have nothing better for them to do, so they're just gonna tease everyone breaking up. Yeah, so all the tag teams are on, on various forms of the rocks. Yeah. <laughs> I mean Shay, uh Sasha and Bailey, uh your uh your coined uh, tag team name, Shania. Yes, uh, <laughs> Shania. That's 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 a Chris Barnes original, ladies and gentlemen. T M. Uh <laughs> Uh, the Riot Squad's kind of... Eh. Well, Shania, Shania is the classic uh, thing they love doing through the Attitude Era. Is like, we really don't like each other, so now we're a tag team for some reason. Right, which means they're you know, they're going to hold these titles for a month. They might get to another pay-per-view, and then they're going to lose. And then, and then the minor powers explode, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah so this match, um, not... I don't have anything good to say about this. It wasn't uh, a bad match by it, any stretch, but it just it, it didn't stand out. It was everything was weak. Uh, that, that's actually the only note that I have wrote down: mm-hmm. to weak, weak, weak. Yeah, you weren't really feeling the first couple of matches. Uh uh-uh. uh. This whole thing, um, everything. It, it looked like they didn't know they were going to work. They just went out there and. And I was like, okay, well, okay, you, you guys are going to work, but look, uh, you, you've got a photo shoot out, so take it easy, okay? Because, <laughs> you, you know, I, I that's what it felt like. It was, the punches were weak. The kicks were weak. There was, like, I think there was one good spot mm-hmm. that, that I liked from the Iconics, but that was about it. Um, was this the match where you opened your mouth and ruined the moment? <laughs> yes, it was. Yeah. <laughs> Dogs has this fun innate ability where it's like where he wants to say something positive about what's happening in the ring. And as soon as he does, the person he's talking about screws something up immediately. Yeah. That's that's why I always preface everything with what's the worst that could happen. <laughs> so there you go. Um, the Iconics go over here and um, for what reason? Uh, so we're going to break up another tag team that just got back together. Why not? Wrestling. I gave this a one and a half Meltzer. I feel like they might be put, weirdly enough, I feel like they could, if they were trying to do something significant with this, pull a reverse uh, Bailey Sasha. And it's like people are, they're, te- they're teasing it, but it's actually, they're going to end up staying together. Med, it may be instead of the slow build to the inevitable that's supposed to be, <laughs> you know, and, Sasha Bailey, and this could be all, all of this could be uh, one gigantic storyline mm-hmm. that uh, maybe I don't know. Uh, Shane's doing the underground thing, so maybe um, 
may, maybe Stephanie will come out and say, "Hey, what's going on with all these tag team? What's wrong with all of you? You guys are you're going to be in the tag team king of the ring or whatever." Oh no! Uh, yeah, I know. I just brought that into existence. <laughs> it's, uh, um, yeah, yeah, that maybe at least it's some story, you know, something that doesn't possibly, look possibly. So I don't know. Yeah, it's just they've been so slow to pull the trigger on Sasha and Bailey. Yeah, and it's it's getting closer, but boy, is it slow. Where it's um, like whoever's in charge of that just can't hold themselves in anymore. It's like I'm gonna break up all the tag teams. <laughs> yeah. So one and a half. Uh, now, I'd, I'd rather seen another match of this than uh, what came next, though. Yeah. Now this one is Apollo Cruz. Versus Bobby Lashley for the U.S. Championship. Um, I don't have anything good to say about this one either. Um, well, there's a new champion. Yeah, there Bobby is. Bobby Lashley won the title. Um, <sighs> I can't even remember how it happened, actually. You know what? I don't either. And... And I don't care. I spent most of the time. <laughs> I didn't get to go back and watch anything this week. I spent uh, most of the time marveling over the fact that um, was it MVP's only. Uh, uh, I was looking at ages. Like first of all, our truth is forty eight. Yeah. And uh, and MVP is forty six and looks like ten years older than our truth. Yeah, we and we found that out that <laughs> night because uh, we were. Wow, it's how is it that. Our truth is older and looks like like if you told me miss he's thirty one years old I could buy that i I would question it, but ultimately I, like, I wouldn't care enough to, to I'd be like dispute it I'd be like he's smudging and he's maybe thirty five <laughs> yeah yeah and I was like yeah you know you that was my guess that's yeah. what I said that night when you told me he was 48 I was like there's you, no if you had asked me <laughs> if you hadn't told me I would have said 35 mm-hmm. ish you yeah know, my yeah. age ish mm-hmm. yeah that uh, yeah okay quick has been around for a minute <laughs> I mean he's I mean he's how long has he been here now 15 years maybe maybe closer to 20. Oh, it, no, no, no. Less than that because he was in TNA for a while. Oh, that's right. Yeah, you're right. He, he had a pretty good run in TNA and then he came back over. Yeah, and he tagged up with uh, um, um, Jesse James. Yeah. And that's when they started getting rowdy. They're going to move yeah. some things. And, and then, and then, and then, then Road Dog got uh, fired. And then, uh, yeah. <laughs> and then that kind of ended uh, his push initially. And then he went back to, then he went to TNA. Yeah. Had his run there, and then he came back. And all of that was better than Apollo Cruz and Bobby Lashley. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, so we have a new U.S. champion. You kind of again, you knew this was going to happen. Uh, Apollo has cleanly beaten everybody in the uh, the, hurt the hurt business. business. Yeah. Uh, Bobby has been doing nothing for the past four weeks, and then oh, he got him in the uh, full Nelson. That's what it was. Yes. And he and he That's tapped. That's right. Yeah. And um the full Nelson is the only thing that I like about Bobby Lashley now. Um although I I kind of like the hurt business gimmick. You I, said it I, was growing on you. You said yeah, you liked the idea at least. Yeah, I, I I like the idea if we can Now what needs to happen and they'll never do this, but uh um you, you need to get in Apollo and he needs to join the hurt business, mm-hmm. and and you know what? What the hell? Uh, grab Titus O'Neil too, and so we can just get rid of Titus worldwide, and it can just all be the hurt business. And then maybe, uh, you know, Titus and MVP can have a feud about who's really running the hurt business, and then it'll get rid of MVP. But then we're stuck with Titus. So it's, I mean, it's. You know, I'm uh, fine with that. Twelve, one, one, half dozen, another. That's uh, you messed up. Yeah, that I saying. did. I, I, I'm tired. I just got off work. I'm, I'm really sleepy. That's, <laughs> I've, I've traveled like 500 miles today. It's a tough Oof. day. Um, whatever, it doesn't matter. So one sh- and a half. I should let sleeping dogs lie. <laughs> ah, this guy. 
That's my time. Got to go. Get out. Um, so next up, we have Seamus versus Big E. Um, this is a pretty good match. This was a fun match. I really enjoyed this. Um, it was power versus power. Absolutely. And a lot of good psychology on display with Seamus attacking Big E's legs. Yes. And, uh, you know, it, it, we were talking about this while we were watching a testament to uh, <clears throat> how much weight uh, Big E has actually lost. Oh, yeah. But his legs are still mm-hmm. just monstrous. I think he's I think he's lost size to focus on tone. Mm hmm. It, it lo- that's what it's coming across, especially when he flexed at the end. Yeah. I mean, and can still hit the full splits. I mean, <laughs> mm-hmm. it's just. I love Biggie. I, I, I he's my favorite one from New Day. That's something else. There's a rumor going around that Biggie's going wants to go for a some singles gold, but in order to do that, he's got to betray the New Day. I don't think that'll happen. I would hate for that to happen. That I would make me sad. I think he would actively sad. fight that. I think so too, because you know those guys are really, really yeah. tight. They and, like they 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 have they didn't break up when Xavier got hurt. They've mm-hmm. been re- they've been keeping his name relevant. Right. When Kofi was on his run, they were still a tight team. Mm-hmm. You know they've they've they they've, la- they've one of the one of the longest lasting stables in WWE history. That's very true. And, and so for them to break it up at this point over that yeah. would be dumb. Yeah, before a legit, but just because of a legit injury and then a worked injury, Mm because I understand that Kofi's injured, quote unquote. But uh, yeah, so anyway, well, that's the rumor mill. Yeah, this was a great match. It was. It had a nice, uh, uh, not. I, I don't mean slow in a bad way, but a nice steady. It was. It was a proper, well stacked staircase. Yeah, that they, that's that what, they that's, yeah. built. Uh, you know, and it crescendoed very nicely uh, with Biggie going over on Sheamus. Um, I, yeah, I really enjoyed it. Uh, Sheamus looked pretty good. He hasn't been looking great here as of lately. This was a good time for him to shine. Of course, he and Pat he's been wrestling Jeff Hardy for you know a month, right. so. You can only do so much there. Also, Seamus is time to shine. Is anytime they put a light on him. Um, That's a very good. <laughs> well, you're bringing thunder tonight. <laughs> but yeah, I give this a a solid three Meltzers. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, lots of fun. Lots of fun. Um, let's move into our next match. Um, surprisingly good. Um, one of your favorites, Baron Corbin. Um, Versus one of my favorites, Matt Riddle. <laughs> yeah, the the guy I hate versus the guy I don't think about ever. Yeah, and uh, uh, you can draw whatever conclusion for which one that is. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, I, I I don't think about Corbin, and I hate Matt Riddle. Here's the thing: I don't. Go ahead, Dave. I was just gonna say the groans in your living room when both <laughs> men came out <laughs> were formidable. Yeah. I don't. Uh, here's the thing. I don't like Riddle's demeanor. I don't like. That's it's the gimmick. Yeah, I don't it is. Like I it. don't. I don't like it. I don't like it either. <laughs> and plus, he goes barefoot, and I hate that. And that was the addendum. That that was the one. But that uh, nah, doesn't matter now. Uh, but yeah, uh, I I I, I, I barefoot, don't... and you're not a Samoan. You're garbage. <laughs> Yeah, then I don't see you. <laughs> I think that's how it went. That's yeah. just universal gimmick infringement. Yeah, um, I, I don't like the RVD bro. Yeah. Thing. I don't dig it. And the thing about it is, I want to hate Matt Riddle more, but I can't because he's so damn he, good. He is an immense talent. Yeah, the, I think the biggest problem with Matt Riddle is he's got this gimmick. He is an obvious caricature that we are all familiar with. We know exactly what he's going for. He doesn't have the acting chops to pull off that character. Right. He's only half committed to it. And it just does. He can't he can't sell it. He can sell in the ring. Yeah. He can't sell the character he's trying to play. Yeah. And that's. 
But man, when you get from bell to bell, kids got it. Mm-hmm. I mean, he has got it. I mean, he had a hell of a match with he Corbin. Did. And um, Corbin did that one thing you like. He did, the, yeah. Uh, Which is a, it's a very slick move. I love it. It's the only thing uh, between that and the deep six mm-hmm. uh, that that I like from Corbin. And <laughs> if, excuse if, me, if you're not aware, it's like it, it's a move where he the Irish r- whip in and he yeah slides, he slides out. out uh, it's at a tour to ring corner. He slides out on the left side, just immediately turns in very fluid motion, gets right back in the right side. And is right behind the the other guy. It would have taken me a solid five minutes to get back into the <laughs> ring, uh, but he's right back in there and running. Yes. Um, like I said, fluid. It's just like it is just one full motion from around that ring post back in the ring. And you know he goes to the well one too many times, and he got caught the second time, mm-hmm. and that's where Matt Riddle was able to capitalize and take the win. Um, Matt Riddle goes over on this one. Good match. Yeah, um, it was a good match. Corbin hasn't looked that good in a while. Um, He's finally wearing something proper as a ring gear. We we did yeah. we got him some ring gear. It's that singlet still kind of has a tank top feel to it. Yeah, but, but I wouldn't expect him to be a bar back in that. So I'm right. Gonna... <laughs> it depends on what club he's working at. I mean, but. yeah. <laughs> Uh, I gave it three Meltzers. I thought it was a good match. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, I'm glad I watched it because they actually turned us. Uh, yeah. during Because, again, like Hensley said, everybody comes out. Uh, I, Katie and Hensley were not familiar with Matt Riddle until they saw him. And then, uh, God, what are we looking at the here? The, the theme, well, yeah. You forgot that um, – they did do that really terrible promo with oh, yeah. Matt Riddle because you had you had the interview, told, yeah, yeah, you had told us about him and what his gimmick was, and we I don't think we'd ever seen him wrestle before, mm-hmm. but we got to see that promo where he half-assed his way through that interview, and that automatically turned the both of us off to him. Yeah, where he calls Caleb bro, and yeah, <laughs> so yeah, yeah, so that's. I think part of it is, I mean, if it felt more natural, it would. I probably wouldn't like him, but I'd buy it because mm-hmm. I don't buy what he's doing. It's 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 either it's just so half-assed and he's he's just too contrived and that it's just like you know what's upsetting about it. You are obviously a fake thing, and I don't like that. You, you know what's really upsetting about it, and this is going to yeah. bake your noodle. <laughs> I don't think it's a gimmick. I think this is just who be. he is. And mm. because he's already, he's admitted a few times. He's like, uh, yeah, I do. I call everybody bro. And, um, I haven't wore shoes in like eight years. And <laughs> I just, well, you kept making the point Sunday night of calling him Spicoli. That's all you need to do. Yeah. Go and watch fast times mm-hmm. or watch any late eighties, early nineties stoner movie. That's it. But he has, it's, it's, it's not laid back energy. It's I'm, not even here. In I'm, I'm right. lazy. He's checked That's, out. Yeah, because like Spicoli in the in Fast Times had some energy to him. Yeah. But it's like I, that's the thing that bothers me. It's like it feel it feels that way where he feels like he's trying to keep a, a, a like keep his character up all the time. Where it feels mm-hmm. like you're not a real thing to me. Yeah, that's that's the thing. I I can tell I can tell usually when someone is like trying to push something in an interview and they're trying to get over their characteristics and it's like you can, i can feel okay you're you're trying maybe a little too hard but you're trying and i, I mm-hmm. feel like you're into it and he's just like who gives a shit yeah it's aggravating yeah especially especially well, when you get in it when he when the bell rings mm-hmm. and he starts bringing thunder yeah and you're like can we not put a marketable thing behind if you he he is he has got a UFC background or a mm-hmm. uh, uh, MMA background. Yeah, can we focus on that? Or if we're gonna do a guy dude bro thing, a Spicoli gimmick, then let's focus on that. Uh, but I would say just don't have him lay into it as thick. Yeah, 
just you know let it feel more natural let him let him come across more serious if necessary yeah like like just have let him talk let him just slip the bros in there be more casual because it feels like he's trying to God, if he the, gets any more casual he's gonna put well, me, i'm just he's saying he's, go to sleep he's it's, trying to hit the beats and it's just like where do i put the bro in here mm-hmm. like i think we made the comparison sunday night uh, he's like a poor man's orange cassidy it's kind of yeah kind of except i feel he, like Orange Cassidy tries a little bit more. <laughs> well, he does, and and Orange Cassidy also has a more natural charisma without having to say anything. Yeah, exactly. And when he does say something, it it you know it 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 doesn't sound like he's trying to play something. Mm-hmm. Maybe but, that's maybe that's the secret though. Yeah. Maybe if we, you know, I mean, we've done this before. Yeah. We've done, you know we Road Warriors, Powers of Pain, Demolition. Uh, you know we. We've done, we've marked off other gimmicks before. Right. Why not make him an orange, uh, a King of Sloth style for the WWE? Sure. I mean, it's, uh, he can come out and not really care. And then the ring goes and he, boom, and he explodes and he, you know, uh, I think we can make that work. The- I'm still saying we as that, if I have anything to do with this. <laughs> hold on, I'll conference Vincent. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. Well, the other thing is just like, uh, I mean, I lost it. It was there and I lost it. That's um, okay. It's, no, so did it, Riddle. So. It's, just that feel, it's just that feeling of like there's something missing from how they're having him portray himself that makes it, that makes, that keeps it from looking effortless. Yeah. There's there's clearly something yeah. missing, and maybe if I had been following NXT and Riddle, you mm-hmm. know, way at the beginning of his uh, run with uh, well with NXT, maybe I would care about it more. Yeah, um, I'll tell you exactly what's missing: the acting chops. Yeah, you can make that character work. Yeah, yeah. He's, Send him instead of sending him to training. Send him to acting school. Yeah, I I tend to agree. I just don't think it's like I there's I think there's just some sort of weird disconnect in him and being himself and mm-hmm. at, like off camera out of character. <clears throat> yeah, and there's just some sort of divide where he just can't be the version of himself in character that he needs to be. No, I agree. So I lost. agree. <laughs> well. Uh, Again, the the match was great. Um, mm-hmm. I gave it three Meltzers. Uh, moving into our tag team match uh, for the women's tag team titles. Ah, yes. Uh, we have Sasha and Bailey. Uh, what what do they call themselves? The golden uh, the golden role models. I think it's something like it is that. something role model. It's a yeah. it's a soft name. It's yeah, not, yeah, yeah. You know, you're not going to see it on, on their uh, on their. No, they icon, just like tossing uh, it out every once in a while. Mm-hmm. Uh, versus Shania. Uh, I ju- I Shana. just love that. It's I'm telling you, yeah, man. Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler as a team. And you you know I don't know if you saw this. There is actually speaking of us coming up with names for Vince. Mm-hmm. Uh, have you seen the Bliss Cross applesauce T-shirt that no. Alexa Bliss was wearing? They owe money to Robert, um, right? <laughs> He was pushing that so hard, all off, almost off the bat, you, and we were doing nothing but helping. Yes, and I'm mm. good timing on that shirt, by the way. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, because they're breaking up too. So, um, God, I hate to say anything good <laughs> here, you know. Um, well, if you want to start with the goofy, um, Naya was wearing a no- nothing meaner than Tamina shirt. Yeah, nothing meaner than Tamina. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I keep trying to avoid. I keep trying to actually avoid that because I hate the way that sounds. It's oh, I love the way that sounds. Boy, if that's not Gastonia, I don't know what is. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, that's kind of British too, because it's like that 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 weird that's thing. That's true. That, a where cockney, if something ends yeah. on an A, it tends to veer into an R for some reason. Yeah. yeah. Right. Uh, I've I've heard both British people and Southern people go idea. Mm-hmm. Also, uh, a little bit of Boston in mm-hmm. there too. Uh, uh, nothing meaner than Tamina. <laughs> <laughs> she should just call herself Tamina. Why not? She uh, goes back angrier than ever. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, it didn't start 
great. Um, Sasha and Bailey's, they're kind of doing their thing. Um, they're working the, they're not so much really working the tension between uh, Sasha and Bailey, but they are working the tension hard between uh, Baszler and Nia. And it's uh, a lot of, hey, I'm going to start. No, I'm going to start. I'm going to start. Okay, you yeah. go ahead and start. Ha ha. Tagged you on the back. I, I do wish they would stop doing that. I, I, a tag needs to be a hand on hand, legit tag. I'm, yeah. They're really overdoing the blind tags. Um, I can dig it once in a while. Mm-hmm. I appreciated. Uh, well, it's weird. I guess technically, <laughs> to me, uh, not to me. Uh, um, Naya and Shayna are the ones you're supposed to cheer mm-hmm. in this situation. I guess, but they're not faces. They're not. <laughs> it's this whole thing was confusing. It's uh, yeah. It. And I liked I liked um, Sasha and Bailey employing the classic heel tactics of cutting off the ring. Yeah, you know, quick tags. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sasha looked all right. She uh, she didn't look bad um, the other night. I think it I think it always depends with Sasha on who she's facing and who's willing to give. <laughs> right. Uh, Bailey, on the other hand, was shining like a diamond. Mm-hmm. Uh, God, I. I don't want her losing that title. She she mm. needs to hold it. She right now, you know, Charlotte's out. Yeah. Uh we don't have Tessa Blanchard yet. If we even get her. Um mm, there's drama with her, so I don't know. There there is, but as I, th- I think Vince would overlook it. Oh yeah. Man. If if, well, if, if, if if you can if put up story, numbers, she'll if, yeah, yeah, if the story I mean, yeah, if she can put up numbers in the that's a lot to overlook, though, and because <laughs> it is, it is. But she can, she's a legit, yeah, female wrestler. Like, as, I mean, and to the I've point where this. they put the TNA world, I mean, the the Impact World Title on her. Yeah. Well, I, I I've said this before. We have now six legit female wrestlers. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of them we're talking about right now in Bailey and in uh, Shayna Baszler. Mm-hmm. Um, that's. Six is enough. That is the standard now. If you can't meet the standard, then you, yeah, well, I'm you're gonna put people over, right? Uh, that and that just needs to be the way it is. Uh, but anyway, um, so back to this tag match. Uh, started. Uh, like I said Sasha. She's all right. Bailey looked fantastic in this match, but not to be outdone by Shayna Baszler. God, she is brutal. Mm -hmm. I mean, I just, I wonder what happened between uh, Sunday night and Elimination Chamber when she ran roughshod over everybody in the chamber and then nothing for several months. Yeah. And here she is again handling business. The go home on this was nothing short of, of see, this is why I have a love hate relationship with the, with creative, uh, Mm -hmm. in WWE. That finish was amazing. Uh, you, you, you have a Muda lock on, I think it was, it was Sasha that she had the Muda lock on. Yep. And then she, well, what did she have? She had like a key lock or was it? Uh, I couldn't possibly tell you names, honestly. Uh, it wasn't a sleeper. It was like a rear naked something um, on uh, on uh, Bailey. Bailey. Thank you. And she goes to the mat with both of them. Goes to the mat with both of them. Grabs Bailey's arm across. No, no, no. Grabs Sasha's arm across oh, Bailey's Oh, it was a neck. triangle. It was, yeah, yeah. Turn that into the triangle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Grabs Sasha's arm across Bailey's neck. Yeah, and proceeds to win the tag titles by herself. I mean, mm-hmm. Bailey is the one that taps. Yeah, because Sasha tweeted later, "I didn't tap out." <laughs> yeah, yeah, not Sasha. Right. Which just that's good story right mm-hmm. there. That's that's nice psychology to go further your story. Mm-hmm. And, um, and, and it does it does further whatever they're going to do with Shayna and Nia because mm-hmm. Shayna definitively won that match. Oh, easily, easily. Yeah. And uh yeah, and then uh, 
maybe probably what we'll have is Naya beating Bailey for the title. That's going to upset me, but uh, or, or Naya hot dogging and grandstanding based on that post match interview. <laughs> Holy crap! Yeah. <laughs> Or that, or probably what'll end up happening is, well, Shayna will. They'll have a, a match between Nia and Bailey. Shayna will run down there, cause some kind of a distraction or something, and, uh, and inadvertently cause them to uh, cause Nia to steal the title. Time will tell, and I don't know if we'll have to wait long. <laughs> yeah, yeah, at least a month. Yeah, so. <laughs> But holy um, crap! Remember when uh, Braun Strowman won the tag titles with Nicholas, the child he picked from the yes, crowd? Yes, I do. Nicholas was way quieter than I was after winning. <laughs> Kid never even got to cut a promo. No, he had school Damn in the shame. morning. <laughs> Lowest grossing tag team champion ever. He had school in the morning, <laughs> and re- and that was at WrestleMania, which so it was already well after like one a.m. when he left. That's that right. Arena. That was that WrestleMania. Yeah. Ooh. Uh, you're not going. You're not going home in under two hours after leaving that area. <laughs> Three and a half Meltzers for this great, great, absolutely great finish. Furthered your story. Can't say enough good things about it. Moving into our next match, we have Randy Orton versus Keith Lee grudge match. Goodness, this um, match, man. Uh, Super strong. Um, this is uh, we, we're we're seeing some good stuff here. Mm-hmm. Uh, at this point, you've kind of you've kind of turned us sitting at home uh, on the network. At first, we we watched the first two matches and we're like, God, this kind of mm. this is this is going to be a weak show. And uh, now you've turned us. It was kind of like, eh, mm? Mm? yeah. Mm? <laughs> And then we're coming to another turn when mm. we get to the main. <laughs> but uh, no, I'll be. Uh, I'm not. Yeah, not. Well, I'll get. I'll talk about it when I get there. But and uh, I'm kind of curious about your thoughts on this, Mister Fashion Plate. Uh, 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 you know, when he's in NXT, Keith Lee, he comes out in his uh, in his trunks and his boots, and that's it. They put him in a, uh, I don't know. It, kind of a warm-up gear kind of yeah, look? Yeah, and it it looks weird on him. Uh, I think, I, I think. Um, is this a Vince thing? Possibly. You, they're just, they're probably trying out new looks for him. It's just, it'll probably evolve into something that'll stick. And, and, you, and who knows, he may just go back to trunks and boots. I certainly hope so, because that's what I, I like, this yeah. big corn-fed man. Oh, yeah. I he's want got a, that he's gut got, hanging out. He's got that world's strongest man physique. Right. Yeah, I, wanna, I, I want to see the gut overlapping. And, and not to be mean, but, but that could be why someone wanted him to wear a shirt, which I don't understand. I well, see. I they agree. let Otis do whatever he wants. Right. <laughs> and that man has... That man's current attire makes him look like a giant bearded baby. He does. And I think that I would, I almost wonder if that's why they covered him up. Yeah. Because they don't want they don't want two fatty fatties. They want yeah, uh, but one Keith, fatty fatty. Yeah, but Keith Lee is serious fatty fatty. Oh, well, they're both serious fatty fatties. <laughs> I know, but, but Ot- Otis has excitable toddler energy. <laughs> that's that's true. And Keith Lee does not. No. Keith Lee is just, I'll let you say what you're going to say, then I'm going to hit you and you'll die. Yeah. Speaking of which, yeah. uh, this is my, I, I love Keith Lee. I've watched him in NXT. I think he's fantastic. Can't wait until we put some gold around his giant waist. Um, if we have to have a complaint, I hate his voice. I hate, I hate it when he cuts promos. Uh, first of all, it's, he he clearly he's reading a script and you know and it's obvious um, well, i think that'll get better over time i hope so but his voice in general it's too nice if we're going to do if we're going to have him speaking properly and then like then i need him to be a blue blood 
No, I I disagree. I want him to be I, Vince's boy. I want him I, to be from Greenwich, Connecticut. I want to bring I back love, the Mean Street Posse. I love that soft timber he has in his voice because he doesn't need to be growly and angry. He doesn't need because when he steps in the ring, people die. <laughs> That's great. I love that. He's like, I will just be polite and I will let you say what you need to say and then I will bulldoze you. Maybe not necessarily growly and angry, yeah. but, but I, I don't, I don't I want it to be deeper. No, I don't. He doesn't need a big show voice for me. It's it, it bothers me a little bit. It's nah. It kind I I liken it to Baby Huey. Mm-hmm. It's uh, it's you notice. Well, <laughs> well, like if Otis can't. Yeah, that's a good point. That's. <laughs> Yeah, because Otis comes down, he's 300 and some pounds, and then he goes, <laughs> and then, man, I, yeah, all I, right, touche, Barnes, you got When me. I say excitable yeah. toddler energy, he's got Farley energy. He's just, yeah, he does. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just, I mean, you're, I mean, going to jerk the wheel and do a goddamn bridging, Barnes. <laughs> <laughs> gonna peak the audio there man i'm oh, sorry <laughs> sorry about no, that no but i i dig that i i dig that because he's he's got he's got a voice like mine and he and he kills people I, yeah. just, <laughs> I dig that um but no i but i respect your point i i get what you mean i i get what you mean you want you want to you want him to have the power behind his voice that he has behind his physicality well, right, right i get that and but i like i like the i like the uh i like the disconnect there a little yeah. bit too Really showed off his power during this match, too. Uh, oh, absolutely. And just a little bit of his speed. Mm-hmm. Didn't... Um, you, you made a good point. They held back and did not showcase everything he can do. Because I've yeah. seen the clips of him doing that stuff, too. And it's like, you save that. Because a lot of people, maybe they don't watch NXT. They right. haven't seen that. So it's like, when they see him pull off the moonsaults and the cartwheels and the, the athleticism, that, mm-hmm. that Bam Bam athleticism... When yeah. he starts pulling that off, people are going to be even more over the moon. That's yeah. not to spoil it. You're right. And that's the way you do this stuff. It's like, you know, I I sometimes think about this. Had Brock Lesnar landed that, that shooting star, that shooting star press on Kurt Angle. Uh, what what WrestleMania was that? Do you remember? I want to say it was in the. I'm oh, sorry. It was, I want to say it's in the twenties. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure it was uh, um, early, like early twenty. It was maybe the maybe twenty one. WrestleMania is Hollywood or something. Oh, you know what? I think it was WrestleMania twenty, if I remember correctly. I think uh, you're right. Because I, I I do remember that's about right, the time they right. started the then now forever, or at least started getting that something was, of the like. It was either twenty or twenty one. Or the next could, generation, something of that nature. Twenty or twenty one, because there was also. I'm, I'm thinking about the, the. You're all very close. It was nineteen. Nineteen. Okay. Okay. It was after because I was uh, I was thinking one of those ones was the Goldberg Brock. Oh, the that's Brockle. right. <laughs> the the Brockle. Ooh. Well, yeah. Let's not talk about that. But uh, yeah, I think about this sometimes. What would have happened if he would have hit that uh, shooting star press on Kurt Angle and just wowed that crowd because. Back then, it wasn't NXT and it wasn't FCW. It was Ohio Valley. That was their yeah. That was their farm team. That was their training area. Mm-hmm. And he was doing he was doing that superstar press. I mean, not superstar press. Uh, uh, shooting star press uh, on the regular. And he saved it until that moment. If he would have hit that. I feel like the wrestling world would have changed. I feel like there would and, have been a, been a lot more high risk, yeah. especially from their bigger people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, 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 I think that, that would have it, it would have changed the way the whole dynamic with the big man. Yeah. Um, he there would was, have paved the way for more Keith Lee's. Yeah, there would have been more of an elevation for big guys, especially ones who move. Yeah, uh, w- without question, without question. That's um, why I keep referring to Bam Bam Energy. It's like it, Bam Bam Energy is yeah. perfect. Uh, yeah, I g- also gave this match a three. Uh, great finish. 
Randy, uh, Randy, you know, sold like a boss. Yeah, perfect. Uh, did did a great job, and you know, and you once again, you knew what this was going in. You knew Randy was going to put him over. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, the only thing I can complain about is, is that damn shirt. We didn't yeah. need that. What, what was that about? You did not. I. Again, I think it was just someone's someone else's hang up backstage about how he looked. Yeah, I, I think that was a Vince thing. Like put put him in a shirt, get him get him out of here, son of a bitch. And <laughs> and uh, I think I think all of his meetings end like that with varying <laughs> levels of uh, of uh, jokingness in that phrase. Yeah, yeah. It's, it doesn't matter. It, it could be with his wife, yeah. and he's like, "All right, I love you." Son of a bitch. (laughs) So we move into our uh, semi-main event with the Mysterio family. And the Rollins family. (laughs) It was two fathers and sons going after each other. Yes, it was. Oh, man. Seth Rollins and Demoif (laughs) versus Ray and Dominic Mysterio. No mom tonight. Um, No mom Mysterio. No. No. No mama stereo. Uh, man, this is what we paid to see. Absolutely. Uh, this this was, was our feature match. A stellar match. Ooh, wow. I mean, you want to talk. We had power. We had speed. We had technical prowess. Uh, we had a great story. Absolutely. All of that was just shining through. We got rid of that damn hood. <laughs> finally. It was the last piece of the puzzle. It was. It was. Um, And thank God, too, because, uh, man, um, again, Dominic, I I, I can't. I'm I'm not going to harp on this. Uh, Just he's a little bit slower than he should be. But again, look at these powerhouses that he's in the ring with. Well, yeah, that's and, that's kind of the thing. He's a little slower than he should be. But then again, c- considering the level he's starting at. Yeah, I mean, he's already in there uh, with one of the greatest ever, arguably, Rey Mysterio. Yeah. Rollins, currently one of the greatest in the world. Mm-hmm. Uh, both Murphy of them, both is... Both of them multiple-time world champions. Absolutely. Murphy... The only reason he's not a world champion is because uh, they well Vince keeps missing the boat on that. Yeah, uh, I think Murphy is a tremendous athlete. He is, and they are misusing him. Uh, I really want them to bring back Austin Theory and put the tag belts on on those two, and they're going to be unstoppable. I think if nothing else, this is a good stepping stone for him to something better. Hopefully, I would love for that. I mean, you know, and. For him, to, or not not better, but to break out into something better. Hey, uh, Triple H played second fiddle to Shawn Michaels during yeah. G- Degeneration X a lot, so maybe so. Yeah, we can only hope. So, uh, every time, every time, I even turned the sound down. Sorry, guys, my phone went off again. Just deposit that there. Wow, he actually <laughs> dropped his phone. <laughs> Uh, man, I, I gave this match a four. I could have gone four and a half, possibly five. Yeah. Uh, so many great spots. I mean, almost too many to talk about. Uh, it, it was just, just, it was a solid match. Everybody was into it. Um, you gotta, you gotta love the father son dynamic. Mm-hmm. You love the story, the, the backstory that goes along with this and Seth and Murph and, yeah, it's, sometimes it can be hard to pinpoint for good or bad reasons. But if I say, but if I was going to say watch any ma- watch one match from this show, this match, absolutely, oh, without match. question, yeah. without question, such a great match. Uh, and the Mysterio family, I keep wanting to call the Mysterio brothers. <laughs> but I mean, because why cause, not? Is it because Dominic looks older than his dad? Yes, and he's <laughs> taller than his dad. And yeah, if you take that mask off, Ray, it's funny because oh man, yeah. If you take Ray's mask off, he still looks twelve, and his wife looks sixty-eight. I'm sorry, it's just the truth. I blame. Don't at I, me on this. I blame, you know I'm right. 
I blame the lighting and the fact that they let her do her own eyebrows. Um, <laughs> do you think they let her do her own eyebrows? I don't think she let anyone else touch him. <laughs> that's probably that's a good point. She probably did. <laughs> but don't, no, I I can't say enough yeah. great things about this match. It was this. I mean this, the, as, and especially as the follow up to the SummerSlam match, uh, wonderful. Mm-hmm. And if I had to give. You know, we're not really doing our horse trailer anymore, right. but if I was going to put a horse trailer on this whole pay-per-view, it goes to the MIF. Yes. Uh, yes. God, he owned this thing. Boy, he took care of Dominic so well. I mean... He really did. You you watched... There was one point they were outside the ring, mm-hmm. and I can't, I can't remember what the spot was, but you knew uh, Murph was... He was stalling for time, and he starts talking to one of the monitors, <laughs> <laughs> and you know, and then and kept you know glancing back, glancing back, glancing back, and then started his move, and it was it was just so well done. Yeah. Um, he I I call uh, Murphy the ring general in you this you one. You can't really teach that that uh, that kind of improv. Ability. Right. It's just it's just good. Business mm-hmm. to have. It's uh, a good instinct. Yeah, yeah. That I, I've always called that. Uh, th- that instead of just standing there waiting on the person to come back, I, I, I've always called it business. Mm-hmm. Is that you need business in the ring? Um, it's kind of like prop work and acting. Exactly. It's, it's exactly what. Yeah. It, it shows an, uh, you have an understanding of the scene and your character if you're just doing if you're. Making do with just you know like working with stuff around the around the area you're in, and I'll tell you somebody else that uh, we're probably never going to talk about again. What's that? Uh, who has a good business when it comes to being in the ring? Austin Aries. Um, yeah, again, we'll we'll never speak of him again. <laughs> but he, the way he floated around that ring. It almost looks sarcastic, <laughs> and it's he was so good. Even the business that he did looked swarmy and and and, and shitty looking, mm-hmm. and shitty looking, uh, being uh, sarcastic. Yeah, uh, but in you know, kind of a damn shame. He's a piece of garbage. Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> I want to take a moment to talk about your comment about um, good actors and prop work. Yes. Because <clears throat> that that is that is rare, in yes. my opinion, because nine times out of ten, when you see an actor interacting more with their props than other people, that's, I don't know what I'm doing on stage, oh, so okay. we're going to pick up this prop and make a bit out of that. Well, I, I meant that in, in the way of, like, they... They're they're not doing that because they don't know what they're doing. They're doing it because it's it's actually germane to what they're what they're yeah. trying, trying to do in a scene. Yeah, but it's oft frustrating for me when I'm watching something and somebody is just playing with a prop because they don't know what else to do. Right. Right. No, I'm, no. I'm with you. I'm with you 100 percent on that. Um, yeah, I gave this a solid four. I could have mm-hmm. gone five. On it, and uh, there was a reason that I didn't go five. I can't remember what it was, but uh, well, anyway, it's it's a four. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, <clears throat> well, let's do this. Um, so we have our universal title match. Yes. Um, it's going to be you know if you want dogs, if we want to save some time. I'll just copy over what you said during the SummerSlam episode about <laughs> Braun and the Fiend, and, and then, we'll just record a new ending about Roman, and I'll. It, it, it would be the same thing, it, uh, yes, pretty much. Yeah. It actually would be because most of that match, this no holds barred triple threat, mm-hmm. uh, was a, a redux of uh, SummerSlam between the Fiend and Braun. Yeah, and uh, you know, as I stated at the top of the podcast, you know, I had some fun. Yeah. Uh, uh, teasing everybody uh, uh, about me joining the Roman Empire and whatnot. Um, okay, let, let's just be real about this. Um, 
this was shitty story. It was. It, this was. It was shit. Um, Here's what bothered me on a technical level. Mm. For him to to enter the match, he had to sign a contract, which he was refusing to right. do until it mm-hmm. met his specifications. Yeah. So Roman enters by coming out to his theme song. Paul Heyman accompanies him. He mm-hmm. signs the contract. Then he walks to the ring. It's legal papers. You have to have those filed before you do the thing you're going to do. Here's the thing about this is this is even my, in wrestling. This is my problem with it. The bell rang. Yes. The bell rang with two people in the ring, and mm-hmm. the match started. Right. He forfeited. That's it. Yeah. That too. <laughs> That's he. I mean, look. Uh, putting all the fun that I had aside. That's what happened. If you're gonna. If you're gonna play this bit and make it work, you need to have a money in the bank uh, right. briefcase yeah. that you're you're cashing in. That's well, and, and why that's, does Roman get a money in the bank? That's what I said for just being Roman. That's what I said too when it happened. It's like this is literally a money in the bank cash in. Yeah, it's, it's now now if Otis had run out at the end, <laughs> okay, then this match would have gotten a five, yeah. regardless if. <laughs> All three individuals had came out and taken a shit in the read, and then it, it collapsed. Now, dog, uh, now, dogs, what did I say what this match was going to be in terms of story? Do you remember? Um, you'll we'll have to refresh my memory. Okay. What I said, my prediction, and my prediction upon hearing what this match was going to be, that it was a three-way, I might have even mentioned it on the SummerSlam podcast, was my thought mm-hmm. was... This is how they get the belt on Roman without the fiend having you to did, take another pen. You did. You. You're absolutely right. I do remember you saying that, and you called that. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's Chris Barnes, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, because I understand. Uh, I, I at the very least, sometimes I can spot some basic st- wrestling storytelling. Mm-hmm. It's like they didn't have to hurt the fiend again. <laughs> right. Uh, uh the, because the again, it's like he shouldn't have really had the belt. Right. Even if it was just for a week again. Right. No, I agree. Even if it's, it was them saying sorry for Saudi Arabia. Yeah. <laughs> and, and you know, the... <sighs> you know what I think the corner they backed themselves into was? Uh, well, we put the belt on Braun. Mm-hmm. Braun too big and angry and strong for have credible competitors. Yeah. Who's the closest thing that can take him down? The Fiend. Yeah. So the Fiend had to take him down. <laughs> yeah, the Fiend takes him down. Yeah. Roman comes in, cleans up. Yeah. So in order to accomplish this Roman... <laughs> Roman coming in and cleaning up. Uh, first of all, his shirt turned out to be a lie because uh, the Fiend and Braun wrecked the ring without yes, him they there. Did. And let's talk about that for a minute. Already. Um, yes, okay. In the heat of the moment, yay, we did the ring spot again. Uh, we saved that for Mark Henry and Big Show or... Uh, you know, Strowman and Lesnar or, or whatever fatty we got. <laughs> I just fatty's my word for the day. Okay. It's, no, I'm not body shaming. We, I just don't got, care. We, it's <laughs> We got to spice this matchup between big people. Um, yeah. So let's, uh, let's, and yes, we're going to have Roman coming out and that's going to be special. That's not special enough. Let's break the ring. Um, okay. Now I will tell you the best part. Of that ring breaking, yes. and I flee. Oh you, yes, yes, why don't why don't you tell us? Oh my goodness, uh, it was the bump Charles Robinson took. Oh to get, my god, because because it's, and it and unfortunately, it's like first of all, that was a hell of a bump. Good on him. Yeah, Second a delayed all, bump. Well, but because he was trying to go over the ropes, but they weren't quite low enough. Right, and the replay caught it perfectly. Where he, you saw the moment where he was like, "Oh shit," and he had to yeah, boost and, himself over. Oh no. <laughs> But man, did he just, without a hesitation, just boost himself over those ropes to the floor. You better believe it. You know who I uh, likened it to? Uh, I know you don't watch a lot of New Japan, but uh, the referee Red Shoes, Mm -hmm. uh, he sells everything more than the wrestlers do. (laughs) If it's a two count, two, and he falls back. I'm waiting on Red Shoes to blade one night as uh, uh, off of a two count, and <laughs> Red Shoes, Red Face. <laughs> they just call him Crimson and be done with it. And uh, yeah, that's it was so that's dedication over dramatic, and I loved every second of it. That was dedication, and he deserves a bonus. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, that's what I. I uh, 
that's what I likened uh, Little Nature's Bump to. Mm-hmm. Um, and best part of the match. It really was. It really was. Uh, the match between Braun and Fiend, it, it was fair. Um, uh, they finally broke the announce table, which had been they had been trying to do for three matches. Boy, yeah, I, I mean, they had been teasing, busting up that table uh, all night long. Finally, they got that table broke. I guess that's uh, kind of a a receipt for uh, Fiend getting hurt on it uh, last week. <laughs> <I> yes. <guess>. So. <laughs> uh, and then Roman comes down with Paul Heyman. And, and a chair. <laughs> yeah. He signs the contract. And you know what? He just went in and he did as per his shirt. He wrecked everything and left uh, uh, with the title. Hit him with the chair a bunch of times and won. Yeah. Um, he pins Strowman because Strowman, even though he's a monster, he is human and the fiend is not. So you can't pin the fiend, right. but you can pin Strowman. Um, I, look, I, I understand why we're going to do it this way. Uh, Roman and Bray have old heat. Um, Braun and Roman have old heat. Uh, I, I get it. Oh, we did um, look over the fact that Alexa Bliss was uh, yes was watching the match. Every time The Fiend was on the screen, she was looking at Staring him. Staring at him forloringly and... <laughs> Twirling her one tiny, yeah. tiny braid. That can be easily undone later if she wants it to be. Right. Honestly, probably the cutest I've ever seen her look. Oh, yeah. Because she was biting her lip and she had the pigtails and she was... <laughs> she might oh, yeah. as well has, have had a notebook that had a heart with, you know, <laughs> Alexa and Fiend. And it's just a little peachy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> put it inside her trapper keeper. And... Uh, <laughs> I want to see that piece of fan art, like yeah. a little kid's drawing of Alexa Bliss and the Fiend, yes, with a heart drawn around it. <laughs> I, I, you know, I wish we could play music of it because I would love to have Beauty and the Beast theme playing as we're talking about this right now. That how great would that be? Uh, you know, the only thing I love more than producing podcasts hmm. not getting sued out of producing podcasts. <laughs> ah. Yeah, yeah, Disney's not especially hard on copyright Ah, infringement. Nonsense. (laughs) How, you know, (laughs) they'll be knocking at our door just because we're talking about it. Um, I I once had a guy that I worked with, another editor, um, tell me that uh, legally you could use 30 seconds out of any copyrighted material. Mm -hmm. I went and Googled that, and that is way wrong. But he was kind of a dick when I worked with him, so I never told him that he was incorrect. (laughs) I'm just waiting for the day as cap. I'm the amount is way shorter than that. (laughs) It's it's no amount at all. Um, But I'm just waiting for the day as cap comes after him. But you notice what's interesting? I've heard something similar to that. Oh, people like to make up rules like that. They think they. In fact, I remember Kevin Smith saying on one of his podcasts they was doing or something. He he was actually playing songs, but he was only playing just like you know just like maybe a verse or two and then he cut it off that's it's way just, too long <laughs> yeah no people take their copyrights very seriously i know i showed you a couple, when you and care were staying mm-hmm. with us i showed you that uh, it's always sunny episode the nightman yeah, yeah somebody tweeted at rob McElhaney and was like hey uh i want to do this production with my theater company who mm-hmm. do i contact for rights he's like don't worry about rights just go ahead and do it fx Wham! Cease and desist. No kidding, yeah. Yeah, man. Wow, that's that's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. So yeah, copyrights, a uh, very serious subject. Uh, I mean, and you know, and I get it. You know, if somebody works hard for something, you know, and creates something, you know, I understand you want to, um, you know, protect that and not have people bite your shit. And well, the uh, problem is, Disney is the reason that it's so. Uh, out of control as it is. Yeah. Well, you, that's very true. They've literally been been getting it extended so they can keep their hold on their properties for as long as possible. Yeah. And weren't speak- we talking about wrestling? And somewhere? speaking of holding as long as possible, Roman Reigns is your new. See that segue? See how it's done? It is, a, mm-hmm. <laughs> this your, is your new it was done, Universal <laughs> Champion. Um, yeah. I was so goddamn mad when this match ended. Yes, you were. Uh, 
Dana. 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 See, this is something else that bothers me. Um, if we're going to, I don't need Roman to be Roman. Yeah. If he's going to be, uh, if, we're, if we're going full heel, I don't want you coming out to the goddamn shield music. I, I need, and I need you to stop wearing the, don't wear the black. Get the, the black just looks like a, a watered down version of the shield uniform that you wear. You, you got to change it up, man. And you need different music. And I, I you, you got to change. You have to change. I need yeah. something else. Uh, you can't be the shield anymore. You are a full on heel. Now. And I'm supporting this. Uh, I, I'm supporting oh, uh, sure. heel reigns. Yeah. Uh, if we do some good stuff with this, look, guys, I've been asking. <laughs> I'm talking directly to Vince now. Uh, I've been asking you to do this for at least five years. Do not make me hate my own idea. Please, I'm begging you. Do not make me hate this. It's just they need to work and make sure it's not a cop out and just now, okay, now That's, you can boo them like you, like you yeah. wanted to. This is the point at which I wish uh, life, real life had jump cuts. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Because uh, this would be the perfect segue for you for to jump cut to you saying, well, they made me hate my own idea. Yeah. And then I. And or like then, a Gilligan cut, which goes. And then I Charles Robinson into traffic. And. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I gave this match a two, and the only reason I gave it a two is because uh, uh, Katie Bearden uh, was was uh, breaking my balls the other night, <laughs> saying that I never gave anybody a two. <laughs> um, so this match is well, a you got to work work especially hard to earn that two. <laughs> um. Well, honestly, uh, though it's it's not a three. No, it's and it's it wasn't a one and a half. It wasn't a. It certainly wasn't I think, lower I think than she that. Was, I think she was busting on you just because you love breaking out the point fives. Oh yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> it's just, <laughs> and let's be honest, uh, nine times out of ten, I I I deserve it when I get this. <laughs> I think you're just looking for an excuse to round down or round up. <laughs> yeah, kind of. <laughs> Without going a full point, right? Exactly, and uh, yeah, that and I, I think that's just. Uh, I think two is just for this match sure. because point uh, for Bray, point for uh, Braun, <laughs> yeah, and <laughs> and Roman was there. Hi, Paul. That's <laughs> yeah. Um, actually, I'll just yeah. Give, Paul, Paul did some leg work tonight because he cut a promo uh, about the situation. Yes, he did for Roman. And you know something? This is something else that I'm going to bitch about. Yeah. Um, Guys, I like the Thunderdome. I really, really like it. I even I support your piped in fake crowd noise. Oh my noise. god! Okay, you're gonna. I know you're gonna complain about. Yeah, that. you got to pod that shit down when somebody's cutting just a promo. Just twist that knob to the left. Just pull that slider down a little bit. Why you guys are on a delay? Why didn't you? And, and, you can see the levels. I know you can see the levels. And I know it's like it's, it's it, on top of that, you know, like they pull down crowd, the crowd volume for when people are talking in a promo when it was a live crowd. Right. So what happened this time? You have full control over this. How did it sound this bad? Was was Ret- was retribution in uh were, were they in the truck again? <laughs> That's the only thing they did that night. They just pushed the volume sliders up further. <laughs> like, they, ha, 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 ha. they peaked the volume. <laughs> Do you guys want to turn the lights out? Nah. Just turn the volume up. Let's go. <laughs> Early night. See you later, fellas. <laughs> I mean, it's... I mean, and thing about it is, Paul delivered some good stuff. Well, a mm. lot of people delivered some good stuff. Yeah. We couldn't hear it. Mm. Paul comes in, and he's... You expect Paul to go, well, sir, let me tell you. And uh, no, that's not what we got. It was just like, Kayla. With Roman Reigns. And just, but no, all we could hear is. Ah, ah. <laughs> yeah. It was like Braun strapped to that rocking chair. Right. <laughs> Braun. <laughs> 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 and Bray's over there it's quoting Shakespeare, and we can't hear it. <laughs> right, and, 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 and that's what we got all night. We could not hear any promos, and it was and, and bad work, guys. Bad work. Um, and again, 
It's a mistake that didn't have to happen. No, this is an easy fix. Yeah. There's a 20 minute delay on that. Yeah. They could have figured, I mean, you, you can fix that as it's happening. Mm-hmm. I mean, come on, guys. This is. Just have one guy at, at where with uh, the crowd feed with headphones on going, guys, turn down the crowd. Just that's it. That's it. What, did just they, because they're like, crowd noise is too loud. Just. The distribution take all their headphones? Maybe that will. Hey, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> what? A, why I, I just wanted to give an example of how easy that is. <laughs> How I, I don't understand how no one else understood the concept of doing that. Yeah. <laughs> and they're a multi-million dollar company. Ah, oh. what kind of, what is this, why? And, Retribution. Hey, the, 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 retri- redistribution, the lights are blinking. <laughs> <laughs> and he's just going to, okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, this, this is a two. Uh, overall, I give the whole pay-per-view two and a half. Sure. Um yeah, um, it, it not not awful. Uh, main event was m- much to be desired. Uh, yeah, but yeah, but like it was I, weak. It was like I said, it was like especially a week, uh, a week following um, SummerSlam, which was a uh, you know markedly better. Yeah. Oh, so much better. Like so what much a difference better. a week makes is like you just took a mm-hmm. step down. Well, right. she's gotten a lot of shout out this episode, uh, but. Katie made a really good point when we were heading home uh, after the pay per view the other night. Mm-hmm. If uh, you know when creative went to um, the fe- went to Bray and Braun and said, "This is what's going to happen. Roman's going to come in after the match is already over and sign his contract, and he's going to pin Braun, and we're going to put the title on him." If I were either one of those men, we just looked at each other and been like. So same thing we did last week. Like this is bullshit. Yeah. Well, that's just. And this time we'll break the ring. All right, cool. We'll just do the same fucking thing. Yeah. And you know, this you you you, you you've struck something in me there, Hensley. Uh, at this point, let's let's pretend that this match would have gone down twenty two years ago, and somebody came to Braun and uh, Bray and said, this is what's going down. Um, or let, let's just say that this match, uh, that this was going to be the same match, except it was going to be, uh, oh God, uh, Austin and Taker. Okay. Um, and uh, Hogan was going to be the Roman Reigns. Austin or, or Brock Lesnar, maybe that maybe that's a better one. Okay. Uh, you're well, getting, you're getting there. Austin would have looked at whoever was booking it, and he was like, "Hell, boy, that's a damn stupid idea." The hell's the matter with you? You go get Vince right now. It's. I mean, they would have fought for this. Oh yeah. This is one of the problems that we have with the new gen of wrestlers. They're just doing whatever they're told, and they're not fighting for creative. Well, Bray, I'm pretty sure was just it was just in like give up mode. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, because I'm pretty sure some part of him broke a little bit with that Goldberg match. Yeah, because uh, hearing how he reacted and everything, I'm pretty sure it's like, oh, sure, fuck it, whatever. If it was, you know, the Goldberg uh, match, and then the damn uh, Seth Rollins Hell in the Hell in the Cell match. But that or- wasn't Seth. That wasn't him. <laughs> You'll get. Sorry, I just caught up with you. <laughs> it's a little bit behind the eight ball on that one. Uh, uh, <laughs> I, I came at it from a weird angle. You did. You did. <laughs> this isn't you, man. I, it, but uh, no, my point We're is getting him riled up again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I am. I'm getting angry. Yeah, but he, you're right. You're right. There, there was just a. See, Taker would have been a bad example because Taker's a company guy. I, he's he, a company guy, he but rarely, he wouldn't let shit like that go right, down. Right. He's like he hey. would have argued to make it better. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And he was like, hey, maybe we should do it this way. Austin would have fought for it. Uh, eh, the Rock would have fought a little bit for it. Uh, Hogan, damn sure would have fought. Is a well, that's stupid, brother. Is, uh, here's what we're gonna do, brother. Is we're, we're, I'm gonna I'm gonna put my creative control clause on this, brother, and uh, I'm gonna bring my sister down here, brother, and uh, you know, and 
And yeah, and, and there you go. Something, you something new, broke. Yeah. <laughs> and then you've got a new match completely yeah. that they got to build, you know, in the next five minutes. Um, oh, yeah. Nobody uh, fights if anymore. If Hogan had been in, like, say, bronze position, yeah, and that was the idea, mm. that would not have happened. Oh, yeah. that I can hear that. Well, that's not going to work for me, brother. I hear that coming out of his foul-smelling mustache. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's, yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, that, no, that's the one thing that I think we're missing right now. We're just the other wrestlers that they're just going along with what I just think the way they've, they've got that company set up now, it, they've made it impossible for any real pushback. Yeah. Brock but, can fight yeah. for what he can fight for and get what he wants. Cause he, he knows his position is comfortable enough where it, you know, it, he, he can mm-hmm. push back like Cena could argue and get, things, yeah. probably get things changed. He wouldn't, but probably not. He probably would have art. He probably would have found a way to soften it somewhat, mm-hmm. but probably wouldn't have argued overall to change it. Yeah. Like there's, there's no one who really, really has that, that there, there's no, there's from what I get, there's no real feeling of, but you know, like a chance to chime in and add anything to the mix. Yeah. It's just you get told what you're doing and that's it. Yeah. And they're just taking it at face value. All, all the superstars are taking it at face value that, well, the bookers know what they're doing. Not all the time. In no. fact, this year, last year, the year before that <laughs> has proven mm-hmm. that uh, uh, they're, they're not always correct. Uh, just like the wrestlers are not always correct. Um, I think there's just that that feeling of, uh, well, if I push back too hard, then I'm not going anywhere after this. Right. They are, they have this fear that they're going to get, they're going to piss somebody off yeah. and then they're going to do the job until their contracts are released and then they're left, you know, with nothing and they've jobbed out so long that there's no credible fed going to take them and uh, have them be anybody and not make any serious money. Uh, so they just do what they're told. Um, that's a mistake. Not that, I mean, some of you guys, you can fight. You you can you can fight for this. You you can. I promise. Fight for your art, guys. Um. Well, having done all that uh, fashion plate, let's go to you. What do you have for uh, uh, best dressed? Best dressed. Okay. You know. Um. Hmm. I'll start with worst, just because I I already have my answer there. That I'm, try, works. I'm trying to think, I just like I'm trying to run back through it in my head. Um, I will say worst, uh, uh, Rey Mysterio. Oh, I, really? Okay, I I like hmm. I like most of his outfits. They're usually pretty creative. Mm-hmm. I don't know what this weird Riddler pony outfit was. <laughs> there were question marks on his ass. There, he had a pink mane on his, uh, on his on his ass. Pink mane on his mask. I, uh, what was going on? Yeah, I, yeah. It looked like a it looked like a leftover from some other event where he was cosplaying as something, but I don't know. Why. Yeah, it kind of looked like a, a, a Mil Mascaras yeah. uh, <laughs> rendition of... Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, um, for me, I had uh, I, I had Keith Lee as worst okay. dressed. I didn't want to include him because, like you, like like we were talking about, he's there's. St- I think they're still deciding on a look for him. Right, right. And go like, but but that you may be right too. Yeah. But what Ray was wearing was Ray's a choice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think the problem was no one was there to step up and say maybe you shouldn't wear that. <laughs> he made a choice. I don't. Right I'm, I'm I'm pretty sure it was high, high, just heavily suggested to Keith that he wear that. <laughs> Love it. What do you got for best dress? Oh, crap. I knew we were coming back to this, and I, I'm still not quite prepared. I would honestly say Seth Rollins is usually pretty well put together. Okay. I can dig that. Yeah. Now, my uh, best dress, and we talked about it that night. And I will say most improved is Dominic because they took the hood off. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Absolutely. My best dress uh, for that night, even though technically it shouldn't count because mm-hmm. it was only seen in the vignettes, uh, would be Seamus uh, with his oh, God, Peaky yes. Blinder oh, look my God. that his he's got big going. Big bully Seamus look. Yeah, man. I uh, do. I, yeah, I. I was sad he didn't wear it to the ring. He needs to, right? But he was he, instead of what he was wearing, like a throwback to like his original stuff when he yeah, came. Yeah, it's just he he wants 
He wants to be pale and pasty, and that's going to be his gimmick. But you know, whatever. It's it's yeah. Put yeah. Put the Peaky Blinder stuff on, man. That dude. That I, I love. That's a cool look, man. That's a it's it's old school. You think anyone's ever like Seamus has come at them shirtless and or showed up shirtless and says, ah ghost? <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> or if it, somebody else goes and is like. I don't believe in you. <laughs> You're not real, man. <laughs> okay, what do you? Uh, let's go to Mr. Hensley over here. Best performance of the night. What do you have? Best performance. I'm going with Rey Mysterio. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Really, you could give it to anybody in that tag team match, but Mysterio carried it. Uh, yeah, yeah, without question. Uh, I think totally. Yeah, no one's going to argue that. Uh, God, it, it was. If you saw one match, that's the one to watch. Just like Barnes said earlier. Uh, yeah, perfect. What do you got for worst dress? Uh, dressed worst performance. For worst performance by and far. Shania <laughs> for that one promo that they cut the, the, that, the post match one. No, well, the pre match. The pre match. Oh one. right. Mm-hmm. We don't Where get along. Were, where they were reading off of cue cards, their lines oh, that can, they say. It's always obvious when Shayna other. doesn't give a shit. Oh, yeah, Shayna doesn't give a shit, and Naya doesn't know how to act. <laughs> this has just been this. This is the hill I'm going to die on for this episode. Apparently, mm. is, is acting lessons. I did it with Matt Riddle. We we talked about it with the prop <laughs> acting, and now here I am again with Nia and her fucking wooden cue card reading. Yeah, but no, and this is also a testament. Take this back 21 years ago. Hand Steve Austin a script and see what he does with it. He'll he'll throw it in your damn face, and he's like, you can get the hell out of here with that, son. I know my lines, son. And, you know, <laughs> and he's going to... In fact... The one time that I have seen him use a script yeah. was during what was it, maybe three weeks after Corona. He did a raw in the empty performance arena. Mm-hmm. It's the worst thing I've ever seen, and you could tell Austin was struggling. He, I mean, it was it was tough, but you also were very aware. He's reading his shit. And it's like, man, that's this this hurts my stomach to watch. Uh yeah, no, I I, I gotta he, agree. He works best in like the Reno 911 Christopher Guest mode. It's like, here's what you here's what you need to get over in the scene. Mm-hmm. Here's what here's the like the bullet points of here's what you gotta do to say. Yeah. Uh, but say it how you want to say it. Yeah, I mean uh, and, and why not let and uh, why not let most of these guys yeah. do that? They have cut promos before. Uh, they can do it. Yes. Um, look, Ray can't cut a promo. I've been watching him for years. I've watched that <laughs> kid since he was 20 years old. You know, should have been put on a script back in the day? Hmm. Triple H. <laughs> <laughs> Rain his time in with a stopwatch. Yeah, he he would drag on a bit. Uh, but now these other guys... Uh, the Iconics do a great job mm-hmm. with their scripted promos. They do. It's cheesy, but it's supposed to be. Yeah. Um, They're Australian mean girls. <laughs> yeah. Apollo, uh, Apollo Crews, Bobby Lashley. Uh, they 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 can't cut a promo. I would say maybe if you give them some bullet points and try to let them freestyle, maybe it'll work. I've never seen them try to freestyle yeah. anything. But oh, and I, I, uh, and circling back, uh, see, Bobby Lashley has the wrong soft voice for a big man. <laughs> You're right about but see, that. I don't yeah. see. I don't. I, not. I not to say his voice is bad. It's just like it's not good for what he's trying to accomplish. No, I agree. I agree. And uh, it, don't get me started on Sasha and Bailey, <laughs> uh, or or Shay and Nia. Uh, all bad. Um, Randy Orton can do a good job. He, mm-hmm. he does fair to Midland. Big E can uh, he can read a script absolutely uh, pretty well. Uh, yeah, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I now find myself wondering whether it would be enormously satisfying or more frustrating than it's worth to be the acting coach to wrestlers. <laughs> oh man, it's <laughs> depends on who's getting it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
And again, that, that's why you kind of got to let them. You got to let them improv a little bit. Yeah, see that's uh, the the scene from the Simpsons episode where they're doing the radioactive man movie and they're acting coaches with Rainier Wolfcastle. Yeah, up and at them, up and at them, <laughs> up and at them, up and at them, up and at them, up and at them. Better. <laughs> But see, but again, this is the lost art of the manager. Yeah. Um, well, let's take Andrade and Angel Garza. Mm-hmm. They don't need Zelina Vega to be their manager. Um, Apollo Cruz needs a manager. He can't talk. Uh, in, in my world, I know you, uh, you guys will disagree with me. Keith Lee needs a manager. Um I I definitely think Roman is now destined for greatness with oh, Heyman. Oh, sure. Um, I don't want Roman to speak ever again. No, no. Yeah, I want to treat him like a 300-point monster. I want That's, everything that he thinks should be said to come only out of Paul Heyman. Right. <laughs> because I'm going to hate it, but it's going to sound great. <laughs> the one thing that, he, that I've ever heard him actually improv was... Uh, it was him and Cena cutting promos on each other uh-huh. at a Raw, and he said, "Hey, look, man, if you want to be, a, if you're going to be uh, the big dog around here, and you think you're going to run this yard, uh, you first of all, you may want to zip your zipper up." I was like, "This is live television," and just off the cuff, Roma goes, "Yeah, it broke on the way out here, big dog, baby." <laughs> As okay. All right, that's that's all right. That's that's pretty good. That's pretty good. That's be, if that's the best we can do, I'll take it. Uh, <laughs> which, but I, I don't know. I don't know. I I hate everybody's promos now, and I hate mm-hmm. that nobody fights for their art now. That's that's the one thing about wrestling. I think that's what's lacking uh, in in WWE. Nobody's fighting for their art. Um. That's that. Yeah, there you go. Um, so yeah, we've got. Uh, I'm giving this whole pay per view uh, two and a half Meltzers. Okay, um, fair enough. Uh, well, it appears that next week uh, we have AEW coming up. So this uh, this content uh, is is on a nonstop train, man. Yep. We're we're gonna keep going. Uh we're probably gonna I haven't made up my mind if we're gonna uh watch it that night or maybe um I'll acquire it and uh we'll watch it uh Don't read too much into that. Yeah, yeah. Right. Legally. Long Long Walk Productions does not condone that kind of behavior. No, no, no. I'll 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 get it legally. Um uh and then maybe we'll watch it Sunday. So yeah, um yeah, <laughs> you sold it. I wonder so, if you can hear the smile on my face. Right now. <laughs> no, but we can feel it. Um, man, what do you say we uh, take it home, Chris? Where where can we find you? I'd rather you didn't. Okay. <laughs> what a weird way to to do that lead in. Where can we find you, Chris? Uh, Give them your address. <laughs> I guess if you want to, you can find me on Twitter at Chris the OK. There's not really going to be much serious conversation, but sure, whatever. You can find me at uh, This Is A Work Podcast on Instagram. And uh, if you feel like uh, I am slowly but surely becoming TikTok famous. Uh, <laughs> Any century now. And you can find, oh, I've got 27 followers. What you doing? I know what I'm talking about, man. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I was like, hey, man, look at that old creepy guy with those weird kid-like backgrounds. Let's go see what he's saying. Yeah. I kind of want to get a TikTok just to see if I can get more followers than you. <laughs> take a pin to this balloon. Just get it, yeah. to, just get it to 30 and like, I'm out. <laughs> just delete it. Just uh, retire. Damn it. And then every time you get new, my feelings. Then every time you get new followers, he restarts a TikTok just to get more. <laughs> ah, thirty-two in an hour. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> it's it's a great petty heel move. <laughs> it's sad. It really is. But honestly, I just I just do it because it's actually I find yeah. it to be easier, and I don't understand technology, so uh, 
I just push the record button and I say what I've got to say. And, yeah, uh, and it's and, fun and, if and if you hit a connection with somebody, all the better. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I think the people on TikTok, uh, they're they're more confused by me than anything else. It's, That's good. Uh, it builds a mystique. Yeah, yeah. I'm mysterious. That's what it is. There you and, go. <laughs> and not a jerk. Well, anyway, if you feel like following me, and uh, uh, you can at just two dogs. That's all it is. Just number two underscore D O G G Z. Nice. There you go. <laughs> well, if you would like to follow Long Walk Podcast on Twitter, you can do that at Long Walk Podcast, singular. And if you feel like following me personally, the best place to do that would be Instagram at DB Hensley. My animals are adorable and I post pictures of them pretty often. Yeah, right on. So for David Hensley and Chris the Fashion Plate Barnes, this is David Two Dogs Hayes saying, if you guys got out of bed today and you had a job to go to and somebody at home there when you get back, folks, this match is over and you just won via pinfall. Thank you for listening to This Is A Work. Thank you for listening, and if you enjoy this show or any of our sister podcasts, please make sure to leave us a rating and a review on whatever platform you are listening on. The Roman Empire? It fell. <laughs> <laughs>